at a compound annual rate. That's at the beginning of last year, at the beginning of last year, that number, that five-year number was. Everything you're doing is based on research. And I think with these meme stocks, people are saying, well, what's the research? Like, what are they doing this on, right? These companies, you wanna be on, as you said, the right side of innovation. So has this exposed, I mean, some people think it's exposed to systemic risk to free markets and other think it's the very definition of free markets. Yes, no, I Where does it fall? Oh yeah, yeah, no, I, um, truth will win out here. And uh, the truth is, History is not going to be on the side of those uh, companies uh, that didn't invest enough to move into the new world quickly enough uh, and probably are not going to be a big force moving forward. So uh, one of the things that I did find interesting, I didn't know that a stock could be, or that 140% of the float of a stock could be short. That was a surprise to me. And uh, so I think that hedge funds or whomever is shorting, it's not just hedge funds, there are all kinds of uh, investors shorting out there. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see if they will stay or if they will move to such an, an what I believe was an outrageous position relative to the float out there. Uh, so, kind of, uh, in a way, they they might have seen this coming. And I do know that the one firm that got in trouble uh, was uh, the the, the uh, I guess the Reddit folks were focused on the listed puts of the. Uh, now, what's what's unfortunate about that is they probably don't know much about. OTC puts, over-the-counter puts, those are opaque. They can't see them. All this move will do is push all of that market over the counter, which is extremely profitable for banks, but it's more expensive for the end investors. So it's a little unfortunate. I, as an investor, I, I always like to hear the other side of the argument, and that's the other unfortunate thing that's going on here, I think. There are people are ne now afraid to talk about why they're bearish on certain stocks. If during our Tesla uh, 2019 experience, if we didn't have the uh, cacophony of investors, sell side, buy side, retail institutionals, uh, putting down Tesla, we wouldn't have gotten the opportunities to buy it that we did and we wouldn't have understood how much those investors did not understand what was going to move the stock. That helped us. And if their voices are, are shut down, uh, I think that will be doing a, a disservice to all investors. Because it, I, I want to know, what are the arguments against this position? Clearly, we're missing something. But we weren't. We weren't when it came to Tesla. Um, so let's talk about it. I mean, your big call on Tesla, you've been proven right there. For your big ideas for 2021, you write about, you've got number seven electric vehicles and number nine autonomous ride hailing. So we've had uh, news this week from Faraday Future going public in a SPAC. We've got GM's announcement to go all electric by 2035. What's your outlook for EV? And, and could you imagine ARK investing heavily in names other than Tesla giving some of these this news that we have coming out? Well, we're looking because if we're right, this uh, market is going to go from 2.2 million uh, sales, that's units, uh, in 2020, it might be 2.3, to 40 million in 2025. So all of these announcements have increased our confidence that the capital markets are going to finance this transition from internal combustion engine to electric. That's great. Uh, who is going to be leading the charge, so to speak? Uh, we still think it is Tesla, certainly in the United States. Even in China, Tesla is the number one brand. Uh, now, the smaller vehicles in China, there is a company, um, 
I've forgotten its name. Uh, it might be associated with SAIC uh, and GM, by the way, that is pulling ahead, uh, but it's, that's not a, counted as a true electric vehicle. These are the ones that go 25 miles an hour, golf cart types of things. Uh, so we think that uh, China might hold uh, the secret as to the next big winners. Uh, we know that NIO, we do not own NIO, it's a battery swapping company, so instead of charging, they swap batteries. Um, that that is uh, going to, to win, win the day. Uh, we think that Xpeng, which we do not own, but which is emulating Tesla, might. We're seeing, uh, and we do own in our more specialized strategies, BYD was a, a, a battery manufacturer to begin with, and Warren Buffett owns, has owned for many years uh, a piece of BYD. That has done very well. We own that. Uh, and then uh, Geely, which bought Volvo, and, and um, I believe the chairman of Geely owns a position in Daimler. Uh, it is also doing a, a lot of interesting things in terms of partnering uh, with um, various companies, uh, including Baidu. So if I, if I had to give you which of the Chinese names we have the highest conviction in, uh, it's probably Baidu. And that had been a hard sell for me because their search business was falling apart and it did seem to me with more than 150 or 200 electric vehicle manufacturers, many being government subsidized, that there would be a blood bloodbath. And, and Baidu, is, uh, the government has deemed it the autonomous platform for China. Uh, we weren't sure whether to believe that or not, or if it would get caught up in the carnage, but it does seem to be doing something uh, very interesting. And there's also another company called Auto X. This is more, uh, this is, they're working with Dong Feng, Dong Feng, uh, uh, in, which is mostly involved in the trucking space. But we did take note that Auto X got, has gotten approval from California to go uh, fully autonomous there. I didn't know that until very recently. So that could be another one to watch. There's a lot of people that follow everything your ARC is doing and the trades and then they want to buy. But how do you know, and this is just a larger question, just like an investor, not about those names in particular, but how do you know when to sell? Like in, in your, what can, what advice can you give to people about that? Because I think for investors, that's almost, it's harder than figuring out when to buy is when to sell. Yes. Well, we have a, a very disciplined pro process. And so our minimum hurdle rate of return uh, for a stock to enter the portfolio is 15% at a compound annual rate over five years. We expect the stocks in our portfolio to double over the next five years. Now, when you have big runs, as we did last year, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, stocks uh, drop below that 15% as a five-year expectation. And so when they drop into the 10 to 15%, we'll be taking profits. So we are selling. Uh, if they're core to, uh, to our platforms, then we will probably sell, if we think it's gotten way out of hand, we'll sell it down to 50 basis points. We've gone from 10% to 50 basis points in stocks and exiting uh, uh, some as well. Um, even if they are core, we just think, okay, they're going to need a long time to grow into this valuation. And we don't want to live with uh, or sit with uh, dead money. Uh, but uh, then we will get corrections like the coronavirus, right? And what we do during a correction, we will have sold stocks that are core. Uh, and uh, for example, uh, to you and Teladoc, are, uh, they, they were in both our next generation internet uh, portfolio and our flagship before the coronavirus. Both of them benefited from stay at home. They started moving up as other of our stocks were crashing. Um, they moved up to such a point, they dropped below the 15% as these others were giving us opportunities to, um, to deliver 50% plus at a compound annual rate. That's at the beginning of last year, at the beginning of last year, that number, that five year, 
a number was 42%. Today, it's closer to 20%. But stop by stop, we're looking at that 15%. And the more it falls below, uh, the more profits we will take. So we, we have such a creative research team, however, and there are so many stocks vying for our attention and, and, and with these IPOs, uh, vying uh, for a position in our portfolios uh, that uh, when a stock drops below 15%, we know there's something else waiting, knocking at our door, waiting to get in.